over 300,000 people each year are arrested for possession of heroin. That's four times as many people who are actually arrested for selling the same heroin. Now, I'm going to cut off all dissent initially, and I agree. Heroin and other opiate use is dangerous for one's health and for society. However, what I'm here to argue is that our current consequence of jailing for possession of heroin does not solve the problem at hand. I'm going to argue that jailing for possession of heroin victimizes the poor, especially those communities such as people of color. I'm going to talk about how it criminalizes mental health. And finally, how it does not solve the problem at hand that catalyzes the actual issue of possession of heroin, addiction. According to the ACLU, 58% of people in jail are there for non-violent offenses, with a large majority of these being drug offenses. The biggest issue is also the disparity of these individuals in terms of their background. 12% of drug users are people of color. However, 30% of those arrested for drug offenses are people of color. That means that a person of color is two and a half times more likely than their Caucasian counterpart to be arrested, even though they use drugs at a lower level. I'll give the example of a 49-year-old homeless man named Neil Scott. He was a 49-year-old homeless man battling autoimmune disorder. He infrequently used heroin and other opiates to deal with the painful side effects of this autoimmune disorder. Because of mandatory minimum sentencing laws, he was facing over 20 years in prison or he had to plead guilty in which his job opportunities would be even more limited. This is quite frequent in poor communities that often lack the financial ability to pay bail so they are forced to either fight their charge from a jail cell or come back home to those that rely on them, children, elderly parents, and have a guilty plea on their record, which shrinks their job opportunities. Many of these communities lack the infrastructure and the facilities to help treat this addiction issue. And this leads right into jailing for heroin possession criminalizes mental illness. Over 50% of those who get arrested for possession of heroin have other psychiatric conditions as well. An example we can look at is Cook County Jail, which is a large jail in the Midwest. 43% of those that are brought in for possession of heroin or other opiates show signs of other psychiatric diagnoses as well. And this is actually why, sadly, Cook County Jail is the largest mental health provider in the area because many of the people that are being arrested for drug addiction actually are those who should be at other clinics getting the mental health they need. By arresting for simple heroin possession, we are forgetting the relationship that exists between drug addiction and other psychiatric diagnoses that make one another worse. And finally, jailing for heroin possession does not accomplish our solution of a healthier and safer society. Rather, it makes it more dangerous because it increases the black market, it stigmatizes addiction, which makes people not want to get help. And finally, it does nothing to actually stop the catalyst of the heroin possession. For example, it costs $450 a day to jail someone. We could have that same person for $27 a day get the help they need to treat their drug addiction. And it is not like we do not currently have the infrastructure in place to do this. Over half of all drug rehabilitation centers also have a program that can help treat codependent psychiatric conditions. To summarize, we can all agree that heroin and opiate use is not a healthy thing or a beneficial thing for society. However, by stigmatizing addiction, we criminalize mental illness, we 
unjustly victimize poor communities, and we do not solve the problem at hand, addiction. And it's for these reasons why I urge you to vote with me and say that although unhealthy, heroin possession should not be a jailable offense. Thank you.